You know, when we got that listener request uh, to learn more about women in you know fields that have typically been dominated by men, mm -hmm. I was definitely intrigued. But researching this deep dive into women in aviation and uh, the maritime world, right? Honestly, like some of these stories we uncovered are incredible. Yeah. Talk about breaking boundaries. Absolutely. And it's not just, you know, about breaking boundaries at this point. I mean, these women are really setting new records while they're at it. Exactly. And that's what makes it so exciting to, you know, dive into these stories. Mm -hmm. So speaking of exciting, our first story takes us, well, it takes us out to the open ocean. Okay. With Captain Sarah Thompson. Now, this is a woman who's not just sailing the seven seas, she's commanding cargo ships. Wow. On a global scale. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a pretty amazing. You know, when I think cargo ship captain, yeah. Um, well, to be honest, I kind of picture Captain Ahab, <laughs> you know, from Moby Dick. Right, not, right. Not exactly the most uh, welcoming image, is it? Definitely not. But Sarah, she describes the sea as home. Yeah. Which I thought was like really striking when I, when I read that. Yeah, I mean, that's not a perspective you hear every day, is it? Especially in that field. And I think it speaks volumes about her, well, her passion, you know? Yeah. This isn't just a job for her. There's a deeper calling there. And she's definitely had to chart a course through some pretty, uh, pretty choppy waters to get there. I bet. You know, even today, the number of women captaining ships is shockingly low. It is. I was floored when I saw the stats. Did you know that less than 2%, 2% of, uh, of all the world's maritime captains are women? It's a stark statistic, and it makes you think about the challenges someone like Sarah has had to overcome, right? Mm -hmm. It's not even just about, you know, being competent and proving yourself in the role. Right. It's about facing those deeply ingrained biases that, frankly, still exist today. It really makes you wonder, you know, how she dealt with that pressure, yeah. especially in such a demanding and, let's be honest, potentially dangerous environment. Well, and Sarah actually talks about that in one of the interviews we came across. She credits her crew, her team, as being instrumental in her success. Let me see if I can find the exact quote. Oh yeah, here it is. She said, having a supportive crew, people who believe in your abilities, makes all the difference, especially when you're facing those inevitable moments of doubt. That's huge. It is. I mean, having that camaraderie, that shared sense of purpose mm -hmm. that can make or break you in a field like that, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. A strong network is, well, it's crucial for anyone in a challenging field, but especially when you're navigating a career where you're often the first or the only. Right. And that's something our nice trailblazer, pilot Maria Gomez, knows a lot about. From uh, navigating cargo ships to navigating, well, flight plans. Right. Maria's story takes us from the ocean to the sky. Mm -hmm. I mean, who hasn't looked up at a plane, you know, and, and imagined themselves in the cockpit? Yeah, it's that universal symbol of, of freedom, isn't it? But for Maria, it seems like it was, well, more than just a dream. It was a goal she set her mind to and just never wavered in pursuing, even when faced with, you know, the realities of the field. Like, we were just talking about low representation in maritime careers. Right. Well, the cockpit is another space where women are, unfortunately, still vastly underrepresented. And for Maria, it wasn't just about the numbers or uh, even just proving herself as a pilot. Right. She yeah. talks about, like, constantly having to prove herself as a woman in that space, mm -hmm. which is, it's just disheartening to hear. It is. She mentioned um, facing skepticism from colleagues, even passengers, wow. early in her career. Yeah. You know, people who just couldn't believe that a young woman could be at the helm of this, like, massive aircraft. I can imagine how frustrating that must have been. Yeah. I mean, to constantly feel like you have to prove yourself over and over again. Yeah, exactly. It's a sad reality, but a common one, you know? We see this a lot in these traditionally male-dominated fields. Yeah. There's just this, this underlying pressure to not just, you know, meet expectations, but to exceed them, just to be seen as an equal. Makes you realize how much mental fortitude it takes to, you know, uh -huh. not just to break through those barriers, but yeah. to, to excel in spite of them. Totally. And excel, and she did. Maria became like one of the youngest pilots to um, earn her wings at her airline. Really? Yeah. And I think she's received top marks for, for performance consistently throughout her career. Which is, it's remarkable. And it, I think it highlights such an important point. What's that? Talent and... Uh, and determination, they really can overcome even, you know, the most ingrained biases. Yeah. Maria's story, it's it's not just about, 
you know, breaking barriers for women. Right. It's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible. I love that. Yeah, exactly. For everyone. It's so inspiring. I can only imagine what it must be like for a young girl to, to look up and see her up there soaring through the sky. Talk about a role model, right? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and speaking of role models, I think this is a good transition to bring up Aisha Patel, our, well, our engineer. Oh, yeah. Who's not just, you know, designing ships, but designing the future of, uh, of maritime technology. Okay, so we've sailed with a captain, we soared with a pilot, mm -hmm. now we're getting technical with an engineer. Right. This is where my brain usually starts to short circuit. Right. It can be a lot. Yeah. But even I was fascinated by Aisha's work. Well, she's working on some pretty cutting edge stuff. So remember who we were talking about, you know, the low representation of women in maritime careers in general? Yeah. Well, the statistics in, in STEM fields, like engineering, are, well, they're unfortunately pretty similar. Yeah. It's a real loss, you know, not just for for the women, but for those fields that are, are missing out on all that talent and those perspectives. Exactly. And that's why Ayusha's work is so important. She specializes in designing environmentally friendly ship propulsion systems. Specifically, um, she's on the cutting edge of, well, she's pioneering the development of hybrid hydrogen electric systems. Mm. Wow. Hybrid hydrogen electric systems. Yeah. See, I told you this is getting a little technical. It's a mouthful for sure. But basically, and I'm going to try to, to keep this simple. Right. Imagine a car engine, but instead of, you know, running solely on gasoline, it uses a combination of, well, hydrogen fuel cells and then electric batteries. Okay. The hydrogen fuel cells, they produce electricity. Gotcha. And this technology is, it's still in kind of its early stages, especially when you're talking about large scale use. Right. But Aisha and, and her team, they're right there on the forefront, you know, developing and refining these systems for maritime use. So she's not just building ships, she's building a more sustainable future for, for the whole industry. Exactly. That's incredible. I love that. It kind of reminds me of something Sarah, our cargo ship captain, mentioned about respecting the ocean, even as even as we work on it or, or in it. Right. It's all connected in a way. Yeah. It really is. And I think these women, they're really, you know, they're challenging us to rethink not just who leads in these industries, right. but how those industries themselves operate, you know, how they function within a larger global context. That's a great point. It really makes you think about the ripple effects of their work, doesn't it? Mm. But, you know, going back to Aisha's journey for a moment, yeah, she's spoken about, you know, encountering skepticism early in her career. Yeah. Like people who underestimated her abilities because she's, well, she's a woman and a person of color. Yeah, it's a good reminder, unfortunately, that we still have a long way to go in terms of, well, of systemic barriers that exist in, in fields like engineering. It's true. And I think it, it speaks to the importance of of mentorship, you know? Yeah. Support networks, especially for, for women and people of color in STEM fields. I mean, across the board, but especially there. It's just like, it's not enough to just you know, open the door. Right. You've got to you've got to create pathways for them to walk through that door and then to thrive once they're there. Yeah. Exactly. It's about making sure that there's a sense of belonging, you know? Yeah. Creating environments where where everyone feels valued and supported no matter their their gender, their background, any of that. It's about, you know, creating a world where a young girl can look up at a plane or or look out at the ocean or even just be like tinkering with a circuit board mm -hmm. and see themselves in those roles, yeah. you know, yeah, and think, hey, that could be me someday. And it's not just about, you know, inspiring the next generation. It's about recognizing the incredible things these women are doing right now. I mean, think about it. Captain Sarah making sure that, you know, goods are transported safely and efficiently all over the world. Mm -hmm. Pilot Maria connecting people and places every time she flies. Yeah. And Aisha, I mean, she's literally engineering a more sustainable future for an entire industry. It's amazing. It really is. These are stories that, well, they impact us all, you know, not just stories of individual achievement. It's like we said at the beginning, they're not just breaking boundaries in these fields. Right. They're leaving their mark on the world exactly and that's that's what i love about these deep dives you know you, yeah. you get to to take a look at these incredible lives mm -hmm. these journeys of of courage and resilience and and innovation it's inspiring it is and hopefully you know we all come away not just inspired but also kind of challenged to think about well yeah. how we can all do our part to create a more inclusive world you know in our own ways in our own spheres of influence exactly so as we wrap up our exploration of these incredible women making waves in aviation and maritime i'm left with 
Well, with question. Okay. If these women can, you know, chart these courses through these traditionally male-dominated fields, what other uncharted territories are out there? Just waiting for the right person, regardless of gender, to come along and say, you know what? I'm going to make my mark on the world. Something to think about, right, Thumbtime? Until next time, thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. <laughs>